Jonathan, how long has this MX330 been here? It's been here approximately three years. Right, okay, and what, what has it done for the business? Now, I can see in here you've got a lot of vertical machining centers, three-axis machines with no pallet systems on them. What are the differences? What's it done for you? Uh, for us at TechnoTurn, the, the main benefit that this brought to us, certainly initially, is the palletization, longer unmanned running, uh, throughput of high volume parts, particularly for our aerospace customers. But more recently, we've really been moving on to the technological advantages that the five axis machining brings to it. Tony, you are a, a machinist and operator here on this machine. How long have you been using it? Uh, since about 2019. Okay, what do you like? What's the, what's the main considerations you could tell people that are watching our channel if they were considering maybe going from a, a single spindle, single table machine up to something more automated? What oh, you say? Reliability, no doubt. Um, reliability, the amount of jobs you can keep set up on the machine. Uh, I was telling you earlier, we've probably got 10 jobs set up on this machine waiting to go at any point. And how do you control the accuracy of the part? How do you make sure that what you get off here is right? We have a CMM set up. We've got a good, good quality team here. Um, we do internal checks with the probing as well. We have gauges. So we actually, we do a lot of stuff off the machine with the parts themselves. But we're getting to the point now where we have got a better system for probing within the cycle. So some features we can check and can get prints out from the Renishaw probing. And what would they be then? The fact you can multi-face machine, the way you can make parts in one operation or one hit, or almost? Absolutely, reducing the number of operations to complete parts, which not only reduces cycle time and reduces costs, but also gives you improved quality and, and less fallout through a process. So if you had to take the output that comes off of this machine, compared to say another spindle that you've got in your machine shop, how would you describe, best describe that? Is it five times as good, 10 I, times as good? I would, I would say, um, if you've got the right mix of work that supports palletization, you could bring an MX330 in and that would replace two, probably three conventional VMCs quite easily. The work holding on here, I, t I tell you what, Lang do, Lang do pretty well, don't they, when it comes to um, you know, vices on these machines. Everyone I see seems to have their vices. Pretty quick for you to set that, all that 10 pallets. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think last on Friday we had a completely different job set up. Much bigger part, much bigger vices. It took me 10 minutes to change all the vices over and get the job, this job up and running. Um, because it was already loaded, the tools are already in the machine. There's no need to take them out. Okay, now does that mean then that you're going to make operators redundant? Because this is a big thing, we see this across our channels and it, I believe it's not the case at all. Absolutely what do you think? Not. Bringing a machine like this into a factory doesn't mean you're going to make people redundant. It brings in new capabilities both from a technological point of view but also from an unmanned running point of view that allows you to focus on upskilling your workforce rather than replacing them. What I find with other machines, like you've got in your machine shop, is often these doors are open and you're in there doing things. How often do you go in there compared to in there? I probably don't. You only really go in there if you're doing a first off and you've got something else loaded up on the pallets, there's no need to really go in there. Not too much anyway. Um, maybe to clean something off and just have a quick visual check and carry on running. But other than that, you don't need to. I suppose the fact you're using cam, uh, you would verify the, 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 the machining process. So exactly, you're, not worry, yeah. you're not sitting there going, my God, is this thing going oh, to go still, back? You've still got to worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't worry, then you're not doing something right. <laughs> okay, now, now for you um, on this machine, compared to the machines that you had previously, as I mentioned before, three axis machines, there will be a lot of viewers that have got shops full of like what you've got. Why would they go for this and how difficult is it for you or for an engineer to get their mindset into not just a five axis but this pallet system as well? No, it's not difficult at all. I mean, it's just running the same job, you're running different jobs. It doesn't really come into it. I don't, in my mind, it doesn't really come into it. You're not, it's not a challenge. And are there any pitfalls? I mean, this is the thing that our channel want to know as well. It's great us you giving a glowing reference about how this machine, as we can see here, is, is in operation and could be for 24 hours a day. But, but some of our audience would like to know what problems could you encounter by maybe going for, a, for an unmanned run solution? Do you have to consider? I think if you've never used palletization to support unmanned running previously, the most obvious challenge that you face is planning that workload through the machine, 
getting the right mix of cycle times, making sure that your tool wear and your tool management is good, your swarf management, your swarf control is good. At the outset you say, oh, I can run 10 pallets worth of jobs and if they're an hour each, it's going to run for 10 hours. But you've got to support that with the right tooling, the right swarf management and ensure that the quality that you're getting on the workpiece is stable enough to support a 10 hour run.